Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video I wanted to briefly discuss the recent announcement from Elon Musk and his plans to colonize Mars by 2022. We're going to talk about this using Space Engine and we're going to basically go on a trip to Mars using this beautiful game as well. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> Now we are currently orbiting around our beautiful planet Earth in this beautiful craft that Space Engine allows us to create by pressing this button right here. And you can actually create quite a variety of different spacecraft here, but unfortunately the model that Elon Musk used in his presentation is not yet available, although I'm sure someone will add it at some point. So we're going to have to use this craft for now, and we can actually control it by going right here and choosing uh, to take control of it directly and so now I can actually move this craft I can turn it I can uh, move it around and I can also basically um, set different commands to it including um, orbiting but what we're going to do is we're going to actually go to Mars our goal is to try to reach Mars and possibly even land on uh, the surface of Mars using this beautiful craft so let's actually position ourselves uh, so that we can actually start blasting away from our beautiful planet Earth and uh, we're going to go full speed ahead, engage our engines, and this will actually accelerate us to a uh, speed needed to escape our planet. And while our beautiful spacecraft is accelerating away from our planet Earth, let's briefly talk uh, about the actual mission to Mars. So um, Elon Musk is essentially building or planning to build a craft that um, it, you can see on the screen right now that will be able to not only land us on the planet Mars, but also possibly even take us to other objects in the solar system as well. And his plan is to do this by 2022, which is actually relatively soon. It's only about six years from when I'm making this video. And so we're going to position ourselves and go toward Mars, even though this is technically not the best way of doing this, but in Space Engine, it's actually relatively challenging to change orbits without planning them ahead for a really, really long time. So we're just going to do this the easy way. We're going to basically blast our engines ahead toward Mars uh, and hopefully we'll uh, be able to reach it at some point in the future. And let's just accelerate time so that we can actually escape our beautiful planet Earth a little bit quicker. But yeah, so what is his plan and why is it so important? Well, first of all, his plan is actually based on the idea that we'll be using reusable craft. And we're going to try to recreate these reusable craft in the Kerbal Space Program in one of the future videos because I actually would like to build one myself to see if it actually works and if we can actually make it happen. I believe Scott Manley has already recently done it in his uh, podcast, or not podcast, his video cast. Uh, he was uh, using Twitch to stream... Um, himself building a, a reusable craft and uh, his beautiful craft was actually well it was good it wasn't perfect but it was definitely good but what Elon Musk is planning to do is absolutely crazy so he's essentially creating a very very massive rocket the biggest rocket we've ever built that will have something like 47 engines on it or is, is it 47 or 42 I think I think it's 47 and those engines will actually propel the actual um, spacecraft which is known as the ITS or interplanetary transport system um, which is basically a, a craft that he designed or I guess his engineers designed uh, to be able to contain something like 100 tons of cargo or 100 different people on it so he's saying or he, he's intending to transport up to 100 people to the beautiful planet Mars that we're headed toward um, using his um, amazing uh, amazing craft that he actually said is not just science fiction it's not just a um, an animation that they made but he actually made sure that we understand that this is actually based on the uh, 3d models that are already being designed and produced in um, in the spacex factories now i kind of hope uh, that at some point we'll be able to get these models both in kerbal space program and also space engine because i would love to fly that spacecraft around but it does have a really cool look it kind of looks like some sort of an insect with something like 100 windows in front and you can actually see the picture um, on your screen right now. And also a really, really large uh, solar panels that will produce something like 200,000 um, watt of power, which will be uh, enough to, to power the spacecraft for its journey to Mars. And it's also going to be using these really, really powerful Raptor engines that um, SpaceX is about to release really soon. And they will have a lot of superpower being able to produce um, a lot of power on uh, taking on uh, taking off from Earth, but also on landing on Mars, because this rocket will be using those engines to also land. 
But the beautiful, the most beautiful part of all of this, and I guess this is where Elon Musk um, is really sort of a genius of this industry, is that he's intending to use only reusable parts. And this is why he's saying that we'll be able to reduce the cost of traveling from Earth, which you see in the back right there, to other planets, um, or specifically Mars in this case, uh, from something like 10 billion per person that it costs right now to about $100,000, which is a price of a very expensive car or a very, very small house. And Honestly, this is actually something that does seem like science fiction, but his plan makes sense. If you use a reusable rocket and reusable parts, it will be very, very easy for us to deliver people to Mars. And this is this can actually lead to the initial steps of colonization of this beautiful planet. Now, let's actually uh, boost the um, actual acceleration here. We're, we're going to cheat a little bit. We're going to use the warp drive. This uh, this particular spacecraft has the warp drive. So we're going to uh, accelerate and uh, use the warp drive to move toward Mars a little bit faster because currently we're not really going that fast. And what you're seeing right now is essentially the warp drive in action. This is the so-called um, a Kiberi drive, which is um, an actual theory, but it's also something that we know can be done in, in for real. This is a drive that actually can be created, and we already have the theory behind it um, planned out, but we just need to have a little bit more um, technology before we can actually develop it. But as you can see, this accelerates um, our our adventure uh, toward Mars, and we're basically going to be arrived there a lot quicker because we're, what we're doing currently is we're warping the space time. We're making the space in front of us a lot, a lot smaller. We're basically pulling ourselves toward the location. And at the same time, uh, the space behind us is being pushed away. So this uh, this kind of a technique is what uh, the spacecraft in Star Trek used. This was called the warp drive. And it's actually a real thing. It's something that we can totally develop one day and we'll be able to use to propel ourselves to the distant stars, hopefully sometime in the future. But obviously, uh, Elon Musk is not planning to do it this way. He's going to do it the old school way by projectile motioning uh, his craft to Mars, a journey that will take up to 100 or 115 days. Um, so uh, for those 100 something days, people will have to stay on the craft and basically live and try to survive, try not to die, try not to kill each other, and hopefully play nice. And um, his goal to, is to essentially send quite a lot of these rockets, one after another, to Mars, and to have something like a million people living on Mars by uh, by the year 2060, I believe, that, that was his goal. And the four elements to the success of all of this um, are essentially fuel reusability. So he's planning to use um, methane fuel for, he, for the Raptor engines because it's very, very easy to find on Mars, very easy to produce. Uh, he's also planning to use um, a refill, uh, for refillable stations in orbit, or basically the craft will be refilled in orbit and then the actual tanker craft that refueled the craft will return back to Earth and be re reused again. Um, he also uh, wants to actually find a way to uh, produce more propellant, more en um, engine fuel on Mars. And of course, they have to choose the right propellant or possibly develop the right type of fuel for these craft. Uh, because the cheaper the, uh, the fuel, the easier it is to make, the more likely we'll be able to do this a lot faster. And now, uh, during the actual uh, keynote presentation, he also talked about various types of fuel that he already um, kind of considered and that they're, they're doing research on. But he also talked about the idea of, you know, this journey has to be also fun. Like, they actually are going to have uh, various entertainment systems um, on, um, on the craft. They're basically going to make sure that people don't go crazy during those up to 100 days that they have to spend in space. Although I think the actual value was something like 80 days. It wasn't even 100. Uh, but, you know, it's still a long time in space and zero G. And so they're, they're working on a lot of these things, like, you know, zero-G games, zero-G entertainment, so that people actually enjoy their trip, because if you're paying 100000 something dollars for your trip, you might as well enjoy it. And so for the most part, they're planning to use methane and oxygen in these uh, rocket engines, because these will be very, very easy to produce on Mars, um, at least in the future, and then we'll be actually able to relaunch these rockets from Mars to other objects as well. Specifically, his, uh, his plan is to actually turn Mars into a kind of a jumping point for uh, these SpaceX rockets, um, and uh, they can then be launched to other objects like uh, Jupiter's moons and Saturn moons, uh, because taking off from Mars is a lot easier than taking off from Earth. So as long as we can land there, we'll be able to take off in no time. Now we can kind of see the Mars coming up on our screen right now. This, it's that point right there. 
and uh, it's getting closer and closer to us uh, so we are definitely going to get there using this technique um, but um, let's, well, let's actually talk a little bit more about some of the things that he mentioned in his keynote and I think the biggest one was that well he said that you know the first people going to Mars should be ready to die and because this first rocket these first few rockets um, anything can go wrong okay so things can go wrong people will most likely die and it should be acceptable for us to to have those losses and he actually said that you know if you're a candidate for going um, it's really not about who goes first it's about making a self-sustainable civilization at some point um, as fast as possible and so you should have this um, sort of mentality when if you decide to go to Mars and it's a very dangerous tr trip and um, you should be ready to die and it's something that many people don't consider when they sign up for these trips uh, which happened i think last year there was a big um trip that people were signing up for that ended up being a hoax um but um all in all it's a it's a very interesting idea so if you decide to be the first explorer you might end up dying and you know this is what happened to people uh when they were uh, discovering the new world when they're discovering the americas many people did die but once we're able to establish the actual colony on Mars, uh, according to Musk, um, we will have no limits. We'll be able to actually establish uh, colonies on other um, planetary bodies, or I guess moons in this case, uh, moons of Jupiter, moons of um, Saturn. And uh, of course, we're talking about moons like Europa and uh, Ganymede and so on and so forth, because those uh, particular moons are actually very, very exciting. There is possibly uh, liquid water underneath. There might be even life underneath. So there's a lot of really interesting things we can actually discover there. But you know what? The question is, how far are we in developing this rocket? How far are we in, in you know, making something like that um, possible? And the interesting thing is that very recently, um, SpaceX announced that their most powerful rocket engine ever has just passed a critical milestone. They were actually able to test the Raptor engine that um, this particular rocket will have. And uh, they were very successful in essentially testing it and figuring out if it was uh, capable of carrying... Uh, as much weight as they're planning to put on the rocket. So in other words, once the engine is ready, you just have to design the rest of the rocket, which is not particularly difficult. So now the difficult part is, of course, to go through the uh, all of the bureaucracy involved in, in this sort of a trip, in this sort of um, a mission. And I, I'm pretty sure Elon Musk will be able to navigate this quite easily, as long as he's uh, actually alive and not dead and as long as nothing bad happens to him, because it's really all about him uh, being able to to do what he does best and that's of course uh, basically being Elon Musk, being a person who never gives up, a person who never surrenders and a person who continues uh, going no matter the challenges, no matter the difficulties. Alright, so here is Mars and we're going a little bit too fast toward it but uh, we're able to arrive and so now I think our goal is to try to uh, land here. We're going to try to very very slowly, very gently land on this beautiful planet and hopefully not destroy our spaceship. I, I actually don't think you can destroy your spaceship in this particular game, but uh, we are going to try to land on it, uh, land on this planet using a similar technique to what SpaceX intends to do as well. Basically, the rocket will uh, descend very, very gently, use some of the air braking to, uh, to stop itself um, in the early stages, and then it's going to use its main Raptor engines located on the bottom to, uh, to land directly vertically on the surface. So this particular craft will obviously not be using parachutes, it will use only its engines to slow down and to basically land on the surface. And um, this uh, SpaceX has been perfecting for quite a while now. They had uh, five successful uh, landing on the barges in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean uh, as of, uh, what is this, September 2016. So I'm pretty sure they'll be able to land on a very, very large planet without much trouble. But anyway, so let's see how this goes. Uh, we're descending into the Martian atmosphere and we're going to try not to die. Now, unfortunately, Space Engine is not very intuitive when it comes to controlling craft and it's actually kind of challenging to do anything here, especially things like landing, uh, taking off or docking. It's actually, it does take a lot of practice and I did not have enough practice uh, using this particular uh, spacecraft. So we might actually end up crashing, but you never know. I might end up just landing very gently on the surface. Um, the surface altitude is right here. It's shown in, in this, uh, oh, sorry, it's actually right here. Uh, it's shown in, in the top left corner. So we're about 70 seven kilometers above the surface but we're also moving at the speed of almost one kilometer per second in other words we're crashing really really fast 
But uh, these engines might be powerful enough, uh, enough for us to stop right before we crash. We'll see what happens. Anyway, so SpaceX mission is definitely very exciting. He's, uh, Elon Musk's um, keynote presentation was definitely also very, very exciting to listen to. And uh, it did um, sort of excite a lot of different um, organizations and a lot of different space scientists, a lot of different space enthusiasts, including, of course, myself. And um, obviously, many people are hoping that he will be able to achieve what he's hoping to achieve. And many people, including NASA, will also support him. Uh, NASA is already actually a client of his. Uh, he's been sending all of his uh, Dragon ro rockets to refuel the International Space Stan Station to uh, deliver various goods to the NASA scientists on the station. Uh, but now they might also be um, his clients for the mission to Mars, which technically has been uh, unofficially approved already. Although NASA doesn't really have a really good plan about how they're going to achieve that just yet, but um, I think uh, with Elon Musk's help, they'll be able to do this for sure. Now you can kind of see that we're already entering the atmosphere of Mars because things look a little bit different here and we're currently um, about 14 kilometers above the surface moving relatively fast but I'm also I think I also have my time accelerated a little bit um, but uh, essentially this is going to be almost the end of our mission we're going to try to land and see if we can survive the landing. And if you actually want to check out the uh, the entire presentation that Elon Musk did, uh, it's available in the description below. There's a link for it on YouTube. This is on, on the official SpaceX channel. Um, it's, a, it's a little bit long. It's over an hour long. But you know what? It is actually worth watching because um, he's one guy out there that can actually totally pull it off. So maybe, just maybe, this is the beginning of something very, very beautiful, something amazing. And maybe uh, even before we're all dead, we'll be able to actually step um, onto the surface of Mars because he will be able to actually um, create some sort of a colony there. You know what? That guy can totally do it. He's done so much more and I'm sure he'll be able to pull it off. All right. So here comes Mars. Let's rotate our view so we can actually see where we're landing. Uh, we are currently almost four kilometers or just over four kilometers um, above the surface. I may need to rotate my craft just a little bit so we can actually have a slightly better landing position. But anyway, here comes the ground and I think I'm moving a little bit too fast. I need to slow down and there we go, successful landing. We just kind of planted ourselves onto the surface of Mars. That works. Stop our engines and successful landing, <laughs> Elon Musk style. Awesome. Welcome to Mars. Hopefully this will be our future sometime in 2040, maybe 2060. Hopefully before we're all dead. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I know it's a little bit different from what I usually do, but I just wanted to talk about the Elon Musk presentation because it was actually very inspirational. In one of the next videos, we're going to try to recreate his actual rocket using Kerbal Space Program and Kerbal Space Program parts, and we'll hopefully be able to also reach Duna, which is the Mars equivalent um, in Kerbal Space Program. I'll see you guys in the next video. Game you later, and as always, bye-bye.